So welcome, my name is Bruno Turkley, and this is going to be a hands-on deep dive using Kubernetes. And what we're going to deploy to is Azure for this cluster, and we're going to be running MySQL, Redis, and a web layer implemented in Flask, which is a Python framework. Now I'm going to assume you kind of already know what a Docker container is, and it's essentially a piece of software that wraps an entire file system around our application, meaning that there is no external dependencies. Everything is encapsulated. So if it runs on my laptop, hopefully it'll run exactly the same way in production. So the other advantage, of course, is that containers fire up much quickly, more quickly than, say, a VM. Oftentimes in the public cloud, they run on a VM, but the point is we want to be able to scale up applications quickly and easily using containers. So before we get too deep into this, I'm going to assume that you've already deployed a Kubernetes cluster in Azure and that you've installed the kubectl command. And the kubectl command looks like that once it's properly installed. And I can do things like kubectl cluster info and get information about my deployed cluster. So it's a good test to make sure everything is done before we actually um, go on with the next steps. Here's some more information on how to get that set up. So here on GitHub, you can see that I have the Microsoft slash Azure Docs area here. And here it basically shows you how you can go ahead and create your cluster. And then down below, it tells you about installing that client tool, that kubectl command. So that's a place to go look before we get started here. You'll notice that I've done that, and I've got the resource group here, Drumia Kubernetes. And here you can see all the infrastructure that I've deployed. You can see for example, three VMs here that have been actually deployed. So anyway, that's what we're going to assume you have up and running as we continue with the rest of this demo. So what you see here is the goal that we want to achieve here. What you'll notice is we do have a Kubernetes cluster. I showed you that in Azure. It's already got a master node and two agents. I, s I showed you those three VMs. And so that's all going well. And in addition, all these different kind of utilities um, that make up Kubernetes are also deployed. So what we want to do in this um, demo here is actually build out the web service and the pods that run the web service in addition to the data layer here, the MySQL layer. So we're going to build this one step at a time. We're even going to build out our own container and store it here in the Docker Hub repository. Okay, let's begin by actually um, downloading the repo here. So I've got a, a repo I'm basically going to download. I've made a directory called Jumia, and here you can see I'm doing a git clone. This is the exact git clone that you can do as well. So now we've got the bits over here, and we're ready to start the next step. Let's take a closer look here and see what I've got cooking here. So I'm going to go over here to the um, correct directory and do this tree command, and you can see that I've got three main um, folders here. I've got a build, I've got a deploy, and I've got a run. And so we're going to go through each one of these in succession to actually deploy out this application. So let's begin by going over here to the build directory and taking a closer look at app.py. That is our web application that we're going to build out. So that is basically the Flask framework that um, leverages the Python programming language to create a simple RESTful web service. Let's take a look at that real briefly. So I'm going to go over here to the command prompt and type in the next command. So begin by going to the build directory and typing out the whole path there for clarity. And you can see the app.py. Let's go into Vim and actually um, take a look at app.py. And as you can see here, we're importing a bunch of Flask libraries. I'll leave it as an exercise to the viewer here to learn more about what this code is doing. I'll do a brief rundown here. But you can see here, we import the appropriate libraries. And over here, we basically connect to the MySQL container. We haven't yet deployed that, but the web app is going to basically do two things here. On line 16, it's going to ask Redis for a connection. And then it's going to connect up to MySQL. And then over here, you can see that there's going to be a couple URLs that we can access. One of them is going to be the init command, which is going to map to the init function. And it's going to go there and create the database, essentially. Just clear it out and create a new database. 
The next kind of route that we define is courses.add, where we're going to post in a JSON request the data that we wish to add to the database. And then, of course, at the very end, there's going to be on line 41 um, a selection here being done here. So we're going to say slash courses and then the ID of the course that we want. And what's interesting about this particular method here, let's kind of blow up the font a little bit here. You can see a couple of things going on here. I'm basically going to check the um, Redis cache to see if that data exists. If it does, I'll just return it from the cache, save the round trip to the server. And over here on line 50 here, I'm actually going to go fetch from the database if it is not in the cache. And then, of course, what I want to do is then go ahead and refresh the cache so the next time we request this key, it's already in the cache. So it's a very simple web app. It's got three operations, an initialize, an add, and then a select. So again, just to be clear of what we're doing here, we're going to now look into the building out of our image here, our Flask Python container. Let's go back to the diagram and see what I'm talking about. One of the things you notice here is that we have our Python um, container over here, and we just saw app.py, which is the Python application, the web app. What we want to do now is build out this container, build out the image rather. When it runs, it'll become the container. But once we build out that image, I'm going to want to actually put that image here on hub.docker.com so that later I can deploy it easily from the repository. So the next couple steps is going to be all about building out that container. It kind of is a common task here in the world of containers to do this. It's not unique to Kubernetes. There's some important files here when we build the Docker container. One of them is going to be this requirements.txt, and all that's going to do is include the appropriate libraries when we build this container. So it's a simple text file um, basically saying, hey, let's make sure that Flask, Redis, and MySQL Python are part of this build process. So the next step here, of course, is to take a look at the Docker file itself, which will be the blueprint of the image that we want to create. And once we run that image, it will become a container. Very simple code here. Basically, the way this works, it says, let's go to the repository, download the Python Linux image. Let's expose port 5000, which is what the Python Flask web app will listen on for web requests. And then let's go ahead and run our app.py Python application that we looked at earlier um, in this demo. So we're going to next issue the docker build command, which is going to build out this image. So you can see here that what we want to do is build out this um, image here. And then what we want to do is take that image and upload it, push it to hub.docker.com. So the next script that I'm going to show you does exactly that. Let's quit out of here first here. And then let's go ahead now and show you this build push script I wrote. It's a simple bash script which says go ahead and build out. Use that Docker file I just showed you to build out this image. This image will be stored at the Bruno Turkley kind of repository at hub.docker.com. And the name of the image is PyRed, meaning Python Redis Cache, because that's what will be in this container. And then go ahead and push that up to the Docker repository. And we'll go look at that after this command executes. So let's go ahead and quit out of here and actually run this command. So like I mentioned, the command basically is a bash script. So we're going to go ahead and just run it. And let's go ahead and building that image, that pi-red image, and then uploading it up to the hub.docker repository. So let's go now look and verify that it just got uploaded. So I'm going to go up here and just change the address to the hub.docker.com, my account, Bruno Turkley, and then the Pi Red repository to actually take a look. And here, if we look at tags, here you can see Bruno Turkley Pi Red. So that worked correctly. Look at tags, and you'll notice that less than a minute ago, the latest image got uploaded. Now, you probably want to be more methodical about your tag names or your versions. You should be specific and say 2.0 or 1.0, and maybe also include a la latest. That's a subject of great debate. This is just a way of versioning our pi-red image. 
So as the next step here, what we want to do is deploy this entire pod. This pod has two running containers, the one that we just built, and then a generic Redis pod that you see, or rather, a generic Redis container that you see here. So the pod has two containers, and that's what this next step is about. So we're going to look at some YAML files that allow us to actually deploy this, deploy this pod. Now later in the demo, we're going to also create a service on top of that pod, pod which represents the entry point for up getting to that pod. So we could expo expose public IP addresses that are available to the outside world. But we'll worry about the service later. Let's get this Python and Redis pod up and running. Okay, so as you recall, we're going to go back to the kind of root folder and do another tree command here. So let's go back down out of the build directory into just the generic container and do a tree. What we want to do now is start taking a look at this deploy folder where we actually um, have our pod definitions and YAML files and as well as our service definitions. So let's kind of go through some of that next. And it's a simple case of just doing the following command. Let's go to the deploy folder. Let's see what's in there. And indeed, we have the YAML files that represent the services and the pods. Let's go now and take a quick peek at the webpod.yaml. And you'll see that, in fact, um, it contains a specification for our containers. The first image is, in fact, the Redis image, which I showed you in that diagram. And then the second image is going to go up, up to my repository, Bruno Turkley, and pull down that image we just built out. So this is a pod. You can notice that at the top line here, um, it says kind pod here on line two. Let me give you some line numbers. Here on line two, we have a pod. The pod has a set of containers, in this case two, the Redis and the PyRed. Okay, so let's now actually deploy this pod that we define out into the world. And the way we do that is with a very simple command here. It's that cube utility we saw earlier. Let's go ahead and run that um, utility here. It's basically kubectl create dash f in the name of the YAML file. And when you do that, it'll say that it's created. And I can go ahead here and do another, say, um, get pod to see my listing. Little typo there. Let's go ahead and just make sure it's spelled correctly. And sure enough, there is my container getting created. So now that this pod is up and running here, this thing is now running, the next step is to actually create the service because it is the service that is the entry point, the broker, if you will, the proxy to the actual running pod. So let's go ahead and look at that YAML file and do another kubectl create to get all that going. And then at that point, we will have um, this one particular um, service up and running. The only thing remaining is to kind of wrap up the database layer. Okay, here we go. We are ready now to take a look at the YAML file that is for the web service. And there it is, web-svc.yaml. Very simple here. Basically, you're just kind of um, internally opening up ports here. So you're going to say, you're going to take in a request from port 80 and then map it to port 5000, which is the port that the Python web app is listening in on. So we're just doing a little bit of port mapping here to make sure that requests coming in at port 80 get routed to the um, Python application listening on port 5000. So again, this is a kind service. This is not a pod like we saw earlier. So let's go ahead now and execute this thing with the create command. So kubectl create dash up the web service. And we can also now go take a quick look to make sure that service exists and is running. So to view the running service, we're just going to do the kubectl get service command. And sure enough, there it is here. You can see the web service is up and running. Now we'll notice one thing here that it is not exposed externally. So right now, 10.0.52.3 is available to internal to the cluster, but external requests haven't been done yet. We will do that a little bit later. So at this point, it's fair to say that the service is up and running as well as the pod. And the pod has two running containers, one with the Python Flask app and one running Redis. So let's now focus our attention to the pod for MySQL as well as the service for MySQL. Now that's not going to be available to the outside world. It's only going to be accessed from the Flask and Python app. 
That's going to do all the communication. So this is not going to be exposed to the outside world, whereas our web service will be. So let's get that done next. So this is a simple case here of taking a look at the YAML file for the um, database service. Now, um, ideally, you would do the uh, pod first, um, but you could do the service as well first. It either way will work. So let's go ahead and do that next. And you can see here this service is essentially listening in on port 3306, and it will go ahead and dispatch to the running image of MySQL listening on port 3306. So let's go ahead now, quit out of here, and actually go ahead and um, run that service. Now remember, the pod doesn't exist yet, but there's no specific order. Things are item potent here, so we can go ahead now and just run this thing and view the running service as well with the kubectl get service. And you can see now that both services are running MySQL and web. The only thing missing at this point from the diagram, of course, will be the uh, MySQL pod. So in terms of this diagram, the only thing really missing from needing to be created is this one over here. We're just going to leverage a standard MySQL container available from hub.docker.com. Okay, so let's go ahead now and do that uh, MySQL database pod here. And that's just a simple case of looking at that. Nothing fancy here. We're going to go basically to the hub.docker and grab the image from MySQL, the latest one. Again, it needs to have port 3306. So once we've actually verified that looks correct, let's go ahead and use kubectl to go ahead and run that pod. So now when I say, you know, get kubectl, get pods, you ought to see two of them. Get pods. And now when we see um, get services, we ought to see two of those as well. So we're up and running here. The only task kind of left at this stage is to open up an external IP address for the web node, and that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so let's go ahead now and do that uh, MySQL database pod here, and that's just a simple case of looking at that. Nothing fancy here. We're going to go basically to the hub.doc and grab the image from MySQL, the latest one. Again, it needs to have port 3306. So once we've actually verified that looks correct, let's go ahead and use kubectl to go ahead and run that pod. So now when I say, you know, get kubectl, get pods, you ought to see two of them. Get pods. And now when we see um, get services, we ought to see two of those as well. So we're up and running here. The only task kind of left at this stage is to open up an external IP address for the web node, and that's what we're going to do next. There are a few ways to do this. We're going to take um, one of the more common, easy ways to expose this public IP. And it will take a few moments to get this done. So the way we do it is kubectl edit svc web. And over here down below, what we're going to do is instead of node port over here, so let's scroll down a little bit here, where you see node port for the type, we're going to put load balancer here. And that's what's going to expose as a public IP address. So that means the web service is now going to be visible. And we can actually go and see how that's progressing. We'll just say, you know, view the services. And that's that same old command, kubectl get service. And you can see that the external IP address is pending. Now that might take a few moments, so we'll just kind of hold on and come back and visit this in a moment. So this will take a few moments, and if I go and look again, it's still pending, so we'll need to be patient here. So it's been a couple minutes. Let's see if we got an IP address, and we do, 1389.224. So what we want to do next is execute some scripts that will prepare the database, add data to it, and then query it. So let's go ahead and do just that. Um, let's go ahead now and... Um, well, actually, we've got to go to the run folder. Let's do that first. Okay, so now we want to go to the run folder. 
And as you recall, that's one of the three folders that we worked with. We worked with build and deploy. Now we're ready to run. So the add data, the init, and the query all need to have essentially the correct IP address. So let's go ahead and um, run that command that is going to clean that up. So just to be clear about the goal, um, this IP address needs to be placed into, into all our shell scripts. So if we look at our shell scripts here, we've got three of them we want to worry about here mainly, init, query, and add. And what we need to do is actually um, go in all three of these and change the IP address. Well, I've got a little um, application I wrote called search and replace. And um, what it does, it basically issues that same command we saw, kubectl. Um, get SVC and then it just kind of loops through um, has a few methods here um, extract line get external IP and then go ahead and do a search and replace so I'm gonna go ahead and run that it's a Python script so I'm gonna go ahead and say path Python 3 and it just went through um, the files and cleaned them up so if we take a look at these files um, they make a lot of sense once we look inside so let's go ahead and just take a quick peek at init.sh a quick peek inside init.sh is very simple. It's going to basically call that external IP address and call the method init. Now remember, we had those in the um, app.py file. If I need to refresh your memory, let's do that real quick. Why does it say init here? And if we take a look at add, um, it's basically calling, uh, doing an add method on the endpoint here um, with curl. So again, notice here in the add, we're just posting using curl, basically, basically rest. We're passing a UID of 1, a course number of 401, a course title of Kubernetes, and here's record 2, and then rec inserting three records in a, in a sense is what we're doing, and we're calling those endpoints. And if you need a reference, you'll see the init method, the add method, and so on in the app.py file previous in this module. Okay, so let's go now initialize the database. Basically, we're going to run that init script. So init.sh. Hopefully this will go through, initialize the database, and then at that point we can start to add our records. Looks like DB initialization is done. Let's go ahead now and bash the add command, which will go ahead and do those restful posts with a big um, amount of data being sent. So let's go ahead and do that. So there's the OK from the first one, so that's been added. You'll see that it takes a moment to finish the other two. There's three in total that we're going to do there. Once this completes, we're simply going to go ahead and query and make sure that that data comes back. So I'm going to go ahead and say clear and just say bash query.sh. And let's go ahead and see the results of our query. We ought to get back um, from the database the information we just inserted. You can see there, there's the first record. There's the second one and then the third one. And so that kind of represents success here for this application. We have now demonstrated all the phases here. We've done everything from provisioning the pods and the services. We've done everything with respect to provisioning an external public IP address that makes this addressable. And finally, we've demonstrated other things along the way, how to use kind of bash scripts to simulate the IO and interaction with the services and the data and the cache. In addition, we demonstrated um, going ahead and building out our own custom container publishing it up to our hub.docker.com repo, and then leveraging it in our Kubernetes cluster. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, good luck um, repeating my steps. If you'd like to see kind of a walkthrough by hand here, you can see here on GitHub ACS demos under the Azure repo, we've got all the instructions I just demonstrated here with the video. So good luck, and uh, talk to you later.